So we're doing this video a little bit different, a little bit different, but basically we are going to talk about why I kept having autistic kids. This is a question that is asked a lot. Sometimes it's asked in a curious, polite way, and sometimes it's asked in a very chastising, judgmental way. Regardless, it is a question. I understand the curiosity. I understand why people wanna know. Four out of six of our kids are autistic. Why did you just keep having kids? Now, there is a big misconception that I like had a child, they were diagnosed, had another child, they were diagnosed, decided to have another child diagnosed, and that's not how it goes. If you are new to our family, we have a 17, 16, 14 year old. Then we have a six, almost three, almost four year old. Our youngest three are very, very, very close in age. So I'm going to try to tell this in the quickest way I can to answer as many questions as I can. Let me start off by saying that I know regardless, this is no one's business. It is no one's business on why I kept having autistic kids. Even if I had intentionally done it, that is my choice, it is my body, and I'm not explaining this because I think I owe anyone this explanation. This is a part of our story, and I get, again, why people are curious. We have six kids. Our two older kids are neurotypical for all intents and purposes. They do have ADHD, but it doesn't impact them in a way that they need special accommodations, and that's why I usually leave it off, not that I don't feel that any struggles that they have with ADHD aren't valid. In the grand scheme of things, when I'm talking about stuff, it's usually not applicable. I had my two oldest kids and then I had Noah. I got my tubes tied shortly after Noah was born. Noah started to show delays around one. Before then, I saw a few things, but one was when I was like, okay, shouldn't he be doing X, Y, Z already? I took him to the doctors. They told me that every child develops at their own rate. He's just a little behind. I also attributed his delays to the fact that I worked a lot back then. And so I thought maybe I just wasn't around like I was with Lonnie and Danielle because I was a stay at home mom with Lonnie and Danielle. By the time Noah was three and a half, it was indisputable. Something was going on. I needed to kind of figure it out. By the time he was four, he had seen a neurologist and she had ran genetic tests on him to find out that he had chromosomal abnormalities on 15, 16, and 17. A little under a year later, he was diagnosed with autism. And then we eventually moved to a different area. I could sit here and talk about like, our decision to have another one and try to ration what our our mind process was, but that's not really here or there. It doesn't matter. We had decided to have another child. Noah was between like six or seven when we had really decided. We went to his geneticist and we asked her, like, what are the chances of us having another autistic child? This was a different geneticist than the one that had diagnosed him with this. This one was in the Clearwater St. Pete area. The original geneticist was in Jacksonville. Now, please keep in mind, this was like eight years ago, guys, eight years ago. This was a long time ago. How we looked at autism was different. I talked about this in the, did we vaccinate video? But because Noah had a specific set of behaviors, it made us look at autism in a different way. And it was a little bit of a fearful way. So the geneticist had told us that because our two oldest kids appeared neurotypical, that most likely Noah having these abnormalities, especially having so many, was probably just a random fluke, just something random that happened. It most likely wasn't hereditary. We of course had a little bit higher chance than our neighbor next door to having autistic kids, but nothing, super high. And that's just from the research that shows like once you've had one autistic kid, you're most likely to have more. I've seen it half and half. I've seen families with multiple autistic kids and I've seen families where there's literally only one. Like I know someone who has seven kids and only one is autistic. So that's the information I got. I am not gonna play the what if game. Like what if she had told me something else? I looked at autism in a different way and I feel Everything happens for a reason. All of my kids are meant to be here. I feel the information was given to me how it was because they are meant to be here. We decided to have more kids. I had my tubes reversed and out came Alexander. Alexander met all of his milestones. He was crawling by seven months old. He was handing me books. He was waving bye and hi to me at 13 months old. He was saying mama by 12 months. Like he was doing all of those check mark boxes that you look for with signs of autism. Yes, there were a few things that were obviously, now I realize like him being autistic, but I was comparing him to Noah. Noah and Lex 
present really differently. Noah also has intellectual disability. Lex is on the other end of that. They presented differently. I figured we were all in the all clear and we had decided to have another child. I had two losses after Lex and then I finally got pregnant with Liam. When Lex was about 20 months old, I took him to his checkup. And that is when they told me that he was showing signs of autism and referred me to early intervention. By that point, I was eight weeks pregnant with Liam. So already pregnant with Liam. We never genetically tested Lex because again, we didn't think there was a reason to. The further I got into my pregnancy with Liam, the more I questioned if Lex was on the spectrum or not. A lot of you guys have been around for a while. Well, you already know all this information. We went back and forth on if Lex was on the spectrum or not. Then Liam came along and we almost immediately knew that Liam was going to be a disabled child, that there was going to be some extra accommodations that needed to be in place for Liam. At his four week appointment, his doctor was seeing a lot of things that she was concerned about. Given Noah's history, he seemed to be following more of Noah's, Noah's path. And so she had asked if she could run the genetics panel on Liam to see if he had the same abnormalities as Noah. It came back that he did. He has one of them on 15. And that is what prompted us to start seeing a geneticist. And the geneticist was like, okay, well, let's test Alexander. And so we tested Alexander and we found out that also Alexander had these chromosomal abnormalities. After Liam was born and we immediately saw some things that, that were concerning to us and the doctors, we had decided that was that, meaning we weren't gonna have any more kids. I basically had decided that because I had two losses before Liam and it was really heartbreaking and I didn't wanna take the chance of doing that again. I was a freaking hot mess Liam's entire pregnancy. I had postpartum anxiety so bad. Like I would get no sleep. I would literally just watch him because I was just afraid something was going to happen to him. And so we had already decided even before that, that we weren't going to have any more children. But once we figured out that this chromosomal abnormality does seem to be hereditary, and of course there are some medical issues with it and you don't know what you're, what, what you're what you're going to end up getting. I was on birth control. Lonnie was looking for places that his insurance would cover for a vasectomy. When I found out that I was pregnant with Penelope, Liam was four months old. This is when most of our followers came along because it was just a lot, a lot back to back. Lonnie had the vasectomy while I was pregnant with Penelope. So many people just want to give me their, their, their opinions on this. And I recently posted like a very short story of this on TikTok. We are getting a lot of new followers from there. So that's why I'm doing this video if anyone's like stephanie you've talked about this so many times what noah i'm tired hi noah hi do you know what i'm i'm talking about what i'm talking about how i ended up with so many kids a few moments later but anyway i will probably re be redoing a few videos and just splitting them up into specific questions instead of making a big q a because apparently people don't 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 actually watch all of them and listen to everything the same comments that came when i announced her pregnancy are the same comments that i am hearing now one is that if i didn't want children i should have just not been intimate with my husband I don't know how one that's anyone's business. For Lonnie and I, intimacy is a big part of our marriage. I'm not ashamed to say that. The next is that basically I should have aborted Penelope. This was upsetting to me when people were trying to tell me what to do with my body because a child might have an abnormality, but it is infuriating when that person is now a little three-year-old or almost three-year-old, it is not okay to tell people that their children don't deserve to live because they, they might have a struggle in life. They might struggle to other people's standards, but they aren't going to struggle to their own standards. They aren't gonna be unhappy. If you would have made a different choice, that doesn't make it wrong or right. That makes it your own choice. It's easy to say what you would do if you were in someone else's position but you're not in that position. Sorry guys, we're back upstairs, we're just everywhere. It's okay for you to have those feelings, but it's not okay for you to tell someone how many kids they should have and if their child should be alive or not. I've seen plenty of neurotypical kids with tons of issues. Being a parent, you never know what you're going to get, ever. No, I didn't intentionally be like, hey, let's just keep having autistic kids or let's keep having these kids with chromosomal abnormalities. Obviously, once Liam tested 
for the chromosomal abnormality. At that point, I knew it was probably hereditary and it most likely came from Lonnie and or myself, but it wasn't until last year that I found that I was the carrier of them, except for one of the ones that Noah has. What's going on? I think in the business of social media and the internet, it's easy to just like type out in the response of how you feel. It's also important to remember how that might make someone else feel. Yes, I am the mother, but I'm also autistic as well. There are plenty of autistic viewers on here. How do you think it feels to have someone say that they don't deserve to live because they might have a struggle or two? A lot of times autism goes with other disorders as well. So sometimes we want to put a blanket statement of autism on everything. And it might be other things that are going on that have nothing to do with autism. So for us, it's not really Noah's autism that creates the most problems. It's his intellectual disability along with his low muscle tone. But his autism, honestly, I think it kind of makes him funny, but that's not really the problem. Where he struggles more is the cognitive side. I want to say I am not saying that autism is an abnormality. It is a chromosomal abnormality, a genetic abnormality, a genetic mutation. This is the scientific name of it. So that is essentially what happened. If I could go back in time, I wouldn't change a thing. I feel that each one of my children are meant to be here. Is this a different life than I had imagined having? Yes. Is this a different family dynamic than I had imagined having? Yes. No, this wasn't what I ever thought or hoped or even was like, oh, let, let's sign up for this. But I don't think anyone would sign up for their child to have struggles. But that doesn't make their life any less valid. We work as hard as we work to make sure they're as independent as possible. Lonnie and I work as hard as we work so that when we're gone, there's things in place for them. And we do so while also balancing the needs of our two oldest kids as well. It is not easy. I feel like it's a juggling act all the time, but I hope this answered anyone's questions. If you have any more, then please leave them below. Again, I'm probably gonna be redoing a few of the videos, especially the ones that are much older, because I guess I feel more comfortable and I feel like I can explain the story a little bit better. Better. Oh, there's the door. There is my husband. But I love you guys, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you.